Welcome aboard, sports fans. It's Tuesday, uh, Tuesday evening. It's March the 14th, 2017. Coming to you from Face to Face Games in the East End of Toronto. Uh, we are your hosts. I'm Tim. Hi, I'm Gavin. And we are the Prototype Toronto League. You are about to watch uh, one of the four quarterfinal games yeah. uh, against uh, the top eight ranked uh, players after six weeks of seven weeks of uh, play. So the yeah. standard prototype, uh, for those of you who don't know, we'll go through really quickly about how a, uh, a prototype Toronto League uh, season goes. We've had the initiative role uh, originally. You got to talk to the mic. You got to talk to Mike. Sorry. Talk to, yep. Don't talk to me. Talk to the mic. Uh, sorry. I'm so used to talking to Devin. Uh, we've had the initiative roll here, and it looks like uh, our player on the right-hand side uh, has uh, taken. No, uh, Steven's already placed it. Uh, Steven's already placed it one, so we got the initiative to Steven then. Um, just to back up a little bit, we'll talk about how what the game represents before we talk about the players. So now just a, a quick note. This is a, a, pre, a pre-nerf game, so we are going to be having uh, the... Uh, OP X7 defenders, as always. Uh, it's exciting uh, to think that actually the semifinals and the finals of the the seventh season of Prototype Toronto League will actually be post nerf because yeah. the uh, the FAQ rules take effect this coming Friday, the 17th of March. Well, they could they could try and uh, barring the end of this game, they could try to squeeze in some some top. Uh, top four games before the, uh, the end of the week, but I doubt it'll happen with all the prep for Naboo. It's so, true. Yeah. There's a fair few prototype Toronto Leaguers about to uh, make the trek down to uh, Naboo. We're not sure if this video will actually make it to the internet before we leave, but uh, we uh, regardless, got, we're looking forward to our American got, hosts. Got, uh, 26, uh, 26 of us there on the bus? 26 of us coming down on the bus, plus I'm told another uh, gaggle or so from Buffalo yeah. uh, are supposed to join us down there. Rumors are it's supposed to be quite the turnout. We're, uh, we're talking about a dozen from Ottawa, too. Should yeah, they're be... going the Cornwall way, aren't yeah, they? They're going yeah. around the far, the far way. Well, far far for us, not for them. Correct. Yeah, that's, sorry. Geology and all that. <laughs> or geography, my Geography. Bad. Well, there's some geology involved. The uh, the way that uh, the Canadian Shield created the lakes. Right? It's that's, beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Ice age. It's a great, great, great drive. They're... Uh, yeah, so just... Uh, oh, that's good. That's tough. Alan that, looking guilty there. For Alan looking the, guilty, break, breaking the camera already. Yeah. Um, good to go, Alan. Don't worry about it, buddy. You're fine. You're fine, buddy. So we've got a pretty good uh, standard turnout here on a Tuesday night at Face to Face. We've got the uh, fab tabulous folks from VTTV Live, or as I say, VTTV Live. VTTV. Um, VTTV Live, uh, hosting uh, the recording of the session for us. We're very grateful. Get some of our league content out on the internet. We've got about a dozen players uh, now, out and about on a Tuesday evening right now. I, uh, I missed the opportunity when we were talking about opens, but the PTL... Uh, if you don't know, wonderful viewer, one viewer, I think we've got at least one, it, uh, is coming up. We've got uh, our own open happening uh, this April, April 22nd, 23rd, and uh, that's going to be in uh, balmy Toronto that spring. Spring, it'll be, uh, you know, positive temperatures by uh, by then, you uh, Americans who are afraid of cold. But, uh, yeah, yeah, if you're uh, within a uh, yeah, few hours you... drive of Toronto, you should definitely 100% come. Yeah, when you turn on CNN right now uh, and you look at the, the snowmageddon photos that are bombarding the news, most of that's Newfoundland or maybe Quebec. It's definitely not Toronto it's getting 20 Toronto. centimeters of snow as we speak. Yeah, exactly. Looking out the window at, 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 at a white sheet. But uh, we got uh, Stephen wonderfully deploying in the, uh, the, the bottom left-hand side of the... Uh, the map directly jousting uh, Alan's deltas. Now, do you think um, he's going to be able to get the double action economy he needs to uh, to light up those ships with uh, with missiles at range three? Well, this is an interesting list that that Moss Eisley uh, has put together here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we call him Moss Eisley because he always often comes up with some uh, some janky scum and villainy nonsense every now and again. But Steve Moss is uh, a great player. One of the uh, the top eight um, players. Do we uh, do we know what uh, what his rank after the seven weeks was? Um, uh, I don't know. He he did finish uh, quite well at Toronto Regionals, if I recall correctly. But I don't know his position. Obviously, he made top eight in the league, but I'm not sure which uh, what what. Uh, yeah, I've got the standings that, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that you put you up. for those of you who don't know as well. Anytime you want to know. 
uh, who's doing well and who's doing what in the Prototype Toronto League. You can navigate over on Zibook Face over to our Prototype Toronto League Facebook page. Uh, so there you go. He came seventh. Up. And out of the uh, yeah, so out of the the eight players that finished uh, the season, the seventh uh, place player being Steven is playing against Alan, uh, who finished fourth. Uh, fourth. Because we uh, we here at the Prototype Toronto League do things a little differently. We do. It's one, it's it's probably one of the uh, things that made me start playing with it as well. Yeah, is the yeah. difference between. Um, so our 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 top eight matches are uh, assigned randomly. They are. So now this is unusual for uh, for. Uh, defenders, at least the defenders are doing a, a two forward instead of a three forward. I think so. um, the magic hair, Alan Fung, uh, yeah. right, current sitting national champion. Yeah, um, is probably doing trying to do a little bit of range control. That's my guess. Yeah, um, with his defenders, knowing that if he zooms in too closely, um, he will give the uh, the U boats time to. Uh, to uh, to establish their target locks they need for their munitions. Interestingly enough, because those are deltas, the the contracted scouts actually out PS them, meaning that it's actually easier um, for Steven to get his target locks. Normally, I think this list uh, prides itself on uh, having to shoot once yeah. to spend those focus tokens. I think Steven's going to more rely on perhaps the. Uh He's going to. I think he's going to engage, spend some focuses, get target locks, and then uh, sloop away from combat and light light up some defenders with uh, with torps. But Alan running uh, a ship after my own heart. He's got Howl Runner in there with Trick Shot. He's got Omega Leader. He's got some good Tie Fighters. The best Tie Fighters uh, he's got. But uh, I run something similar on a five ship version uh, without defenders, which. Probably means it, it's worse. So uh, Devin is being incredibly modest. He's probably one of the best formation flying uh, tie anything uh, players I've ever come across. At least, if not one of the top ten in the country. I, I taught Alan how to do that uh, offset box formation. I mean, it's not a hard thing, but it just means that you're never going to bump ever. Well, you can run them as tight as you want. He's 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 got him a little loose there. Uh, you know, but you know, I, that's me saying that. He'd look at me and roll my eyes yeah. or roll his eyes. But, uh, so let's look at uh, let's look at the players a little bit uh, first. Um, as I said, they're both uh, top eight players, which means that they've played seven matches through the prototype Toronto League season, yep. which happens lasts over seven weeks. And um, each each one of those games had to be a different list, and you couldn't repeat any named pilots. Wait, so you can't play Paratani seven times in a row? You Devin? can't play Paratani seven times in a row. You can't play where's, Dash where's, seven times in a row. Where's the fun in that? Well, look, look, Tim. I know that you just want to run Chopper eight hey, days hey, a week. Hey, Chopper's but, my boy. Uh, you can't in the prototype league. You can run him twice. You can run him as a crew. You can run him as a pilot, but you can't run him more than that. Which I think is a, is probably one of the things that uh, has helped our community grow to over uh, 50 players yeah. recently is the fact that people get a chance to uh, come to an environment with uh, different skill levels and feel like they can try out something they thought up on their so kitchen now, table. Uh, here, here's game. Alan. So this is what I expected him to do. Is he's going to barrel forward. Uh, it's Berlin, as they might say in the valley. But uh, he's doing a five forward with those guys. Uh, and going to bump, maybe? But uh, I don't know if bumping's no, the right fine. move here. No, no, no. I, I'm assuming Steven's going to bump. But See, I don't I know don't, if that's the right move. I don't think so. I think I think the if... if if I'm Steven, uh, I mean, I'm not, but if, if, if I'm Steven, I'm thinking two things. I want to get at least maybe one in there and see what I can do in terms of uh But with an Atani list, you don't up. really care about bumping, right? That's, that's Not when you problem. have three of them, no. And exactly. You, and you want to try and uh, maintain more than range one, otherwise you can't shoot your ordnance. Because all right. three of these contracted scouts are equipped with plasma torpedoes. Now, he's moved A in order to bump... No, he's moved one in order to bump two yeah. onto himself instead of onto the defender. Now, it's important to note as well, Devin, that the uh, the jump master at the rear of Steven's formation, number three, is the only one of the three jump masters that is not equipped with extra munitions, meaning he only has Oh, now I assume he was going to do a, a safe maneuver with this guy. I did as well. I was thinking that he was going to As he bumped, he yeah. has. Oh. So that's... 
it's, it, with a with a one or a two forward, he would have been safe. That all the focuses now. Yeah. Now, now he's, his Atani list is actually useless at this point. No, no focus for this turn. No target locks for next turn. My that's goodness. a that's a bit of a rough move there. A bit of a rough start for Moss Isley there. But we've got Allen bringing up his. Uh, his tie fo. It looks like he's bringing up. Uh, actually, that's that said. Howl weight runner. of dice. You're looking at Howl Runner there eating three shots. Because how do you not take on Howl Runner? Well, that's the interesting question in this case. I mean, talk about uh, one of the things that rookie players always have a tough time with is target priority. So you're, absolutely, you're absolutely. you're a tie player. I've got yeah. Howl Runner, who gives all of my ties rerolls at range one. I've got Omega Leader, which means if I've got a target lock on you, you can't mod your dice when you attack me, and I can't mod, uh, you can't mod your dice when I attack you. Yeah. Who's a, who's more of a threat in this oh. list? Hellrunner is, you always kill Hellrunner first, because she's easy to kill. She shoots relatively first pot skill eight. She's probably spending a focus on that. If she's not, she's not doing any damage. Uh, and she's only got three hull. So... So you got uh, Allen's Omega Leader taking a target lock on the Jump Master right yeah. in front of him. Howl Runner's a great ship. You know, those Deltas are going to do a massive amount of damage if, if Steven can't kill Howl Runner before they shoot. Okay, so, so that looks like Omega Leader taking a shot. Yeah. Hit uh, crit looks Runner like. Look, we got hit crit. Oh, man. That's how you get a leader to do damage. One evade result. That's uh, Juked from yeah. Omega Leader. Two, Two damage. damage. There we go. Thanks, Allen. All right. Now that's all in the hair. There was no skill involved there. It was no. just all in the hair right there. It's a lucky, yeah. uh, lucky hair roll. Yeah, yeah. So now we got Howl Runner. Howl Runner can't help herself, but look at that, three hits. That's what we call an Allen oh, Fung that's, roll, folks. That's, I love it when Howl Runner does that. All right, no juke, no juke, but uh, two, two more, more shields, shields off of uh, yeah. Jump Master number two. It looks yeah. like they're shooting at uh, Jump Master. Oh, one. sorry, it's it's Moss's two. It's our number one. My yeah. mistake there. Yeah. yeah. So they're shooting at the closest one, the one so that's on an angle. So it's now shieldless, right? So the, uh, it's a, a little bit safer because the one of the deltas can't shoot yeah, it. Yeah, all three of the all three of the jump masters can now shoot before the deltas shoot, which is interesting because they they have probably have a decent chance of. If he's not shooting, Howl Runner, he's made a mistake. So uh, we'll see. Uh, it looks like three dice. Uh, oh, Howl Runner is taking what you want to see. two damage, I reckon. One damage. One damage. One damage. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The one. Right target priority. You know, get okay. Howlrunner off the board before she gives two more rerolls. Okay, so we've got Jump Master Two doing a range two shot on Howlrunner here. Yeah. Uh, without tokens. Two dice. Uh, we Not got much. one hit. And Howlrunner, oh. Lankin out. Ooh, she, she does have a token. She's got a token. So he's he's got to spend it. He's yeah. thinking about it. But you uh, know, what are the pros and cons about spending? Uh, yeah, hundred percent spending. You never, spending. You never know you, what the third roll is. If right? you can prevent it, da damage prevention on Howlrunner now is always a good idea. Okay. Yeah, you know, like you don't you don't know the outcome of this roll, and statistically this is even. This is a wash. He's st statistically going to do one hit. Alan's going to roll one of eight. Like that's I I take it to prevent damage. Yeah, Look he's at got that. the one Done. wiggly. And what would you do now with that focus? You can't save it. Nope. You want to prevent a damage if you can. Here we go. Range one onto the scout with no shields. Can't kill it, but that's going to be a stack this of damage. This is uh, Delta Squadron uh, Pilot B. Howie reroll. Three hits from the Howie on a reroll. Uh, oh, look like and he's just gonna eat it all. Ooh, that sucks. Well, you know what? I mean, positionally now, um, Moss has traded a considerable amount of damage on one of his jump masters. What are the benefits for his position right now? Would you say, Devin? I mean, I, I'm looking at it and he's, I see he's blocking the four Ks. I've seen two. De I've seen two defenders that basically have nowhere to go. Um, Alan's gonna hard three upboard and thread the needle through the rocks uh, because all of his ships can follow. You and where are the jump masters going to go? They got to go fast, or you, they're just going to stay there. You reckon Defender A can make that three turn without clipping that rock? Yeah. Holly reroll. Let's see. Four. Spending focus for. Yeah, four it's just on hits. number two. So let's see if he loses some shields. Three shields. Yeah. Three shields on number two. That's uh. That's a rough round. Very rough, for, rough for Moss. If he'd had a focus token, if he'd had focus tokens on them all, Howley would be dead. Well, that's one of the things that makes Moss's list very interesting is the fact that if one of them could focus, yeah, then all of them get a focus. That's exactly. And it. anytime one of them spends the focus, now it has to be on offense. It can't be spending the focus token on defense. But anytime any one of them spends that focus, now you've set yourself up with the right. potential for an ordnance shot the following turn. But had three been able to. Oh, I don't know what that 
Okay. Victor, well, has, Victor has abandoned us in our time of need. Okay, yeah. it's gone away. <laughs> I think he's just got over to tweak the camera. <laughs> so, had number three been able to focus, one and two spend their focuses on offense no matter what. One can white sloop once the defenders move, right? And light up anywhere Hellrunner can go, anywhere Omega Leader can go, right? Like, that is... That is what Steven needed, and now he's he's going to struggle to come back. I mean, well, the opening... one's essentially dead, and two's, two's got one shield. So, I mean, that was the best engagement Allen could hope for. It's interesting to note as well, I think, if you think about the way that uh, Moss approached the initial engagement with his jump masters, that it brings to, to, to mind the fact that the, the rule of 11 is a lot harder to calculate when you've got big base ships in the mix. Can you, uh, for any of the folks that aren't aware of the, uh, the rule of 11, Devin, can you help us out? So rule of 11 is if you add up 11 base lengths, you'll be able, or you'll be able to shoot each other. Correct. So for the maneuver and your, your base counts as one. Now that's so with, five, you, with me starting with my back edge on my board edge at yeah. the beginning and you yeah. starting with your uh, back edge on so your board So if you edge. add up the maneuver and speed. It, in it includes the base lengths of the ship that you are when you start. Yeah. Okay. So if you add that together, so if I do a five forward at six and if they do a four forward that's five, we should be able to shoot each other. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. That's and range when three. That's just in. Yeah. Barely in. And I'm a big base ship, meaning that if I do a one four, that's actually that's five actually... base lengths, right? Because I'm two. I'm two to start because I'm a big ship. No, no. I do a one uh, forward. No, because it's you do a one and then a two, so that's three. Right. But what I'm saying is the rule of eleven is. Am I right in saying that when the rule of eleven includes the the lengths I, that you start? I'd only at, add right? one from yeah. uh, from for actually the big bases starting against the board edge. Okay. Because you're uh, you'd only add like half. Base. Makes sense. Okay, makes sense. So we've got some dials going down here. It looks like Moss has decided what he's doing with two of his jump masters and trying to contemplate what to do with the third one there, knowing that the Delta Squadron defenders move before him and actually there's some potentials to deny tokens again. Yeah. The 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 best part about this for Steven is the four Ks are blocked. Right, Alan can try it. But I mean, what would you? I'm saying he's gonna hard three out of there and, and and 4K in the next turn, right? And then he'd be in the middle of the board, pointed out at wherever he needed to go. Well, jump master number two, I don't know if the two white sloop to the left would actually fit without clip the back right corner. It's a big base, rock. yeah. It's a big base. It's pretty oh. close. So we've got there we go hard hard threes, a hard three and a hard three from the defenders. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's the only maneuver. Uh, a five forward and clear for the for A, but not for B. Uh, and how runner? Why is he revealing all of them? I think he did hard three. Um, I think he did. Did he do a one bank with that one? Looks like it. No. Is that a th three bank? It's tough for us to see the uh, the dials here, folks. You'll forget. Uh, whatever maneuver um, Alan has done, it's a three or faster. I think he probably revealed three turns. I'm gonna uh, go. Up, I'm gonna go up a lot. Yeah. So we've got a three straight coming from uh, Jump Master number one here, which clears the uh, the scrum of uh, Alan's ships gives Moss the opportunity to start his action economy rolling here. All right, so he did three forwards. He did do three abusing forwards. Abusing okay. the, uh, the pre-nerf. The fact that this is pre-nerf, <laughs> uh, he said to block. But uh, Steven's been able to at least blow past him a little bit. I was just saying, now he's, he's managed to start his action economy up here. Uh, it looks like two has probably gone for the uh, the two sloop to its left here. Yeah, he said very, very proudly I've gone for the block, but... This might be the only ship that gets caught in his net, but to, to what end? I'm not... I gotta tell you the truth, Devin. Um, back before contracted scouts were not up, we got a block there. It doesn't yeah. look like Steven's gonna be able to clear it. At least it's a white man. He doesn't take a stress token for all three of them. And he already has an action, thanks to uh, scout number one escaping out the back. I was saying, I, I've played plenty of matches against Jump Masters pre-nerf. Uh, pre um, before Dead Eye was Which nerfed. nerf? Now there's been four nerfs to the Jump Master because the ship itself <laughs> is uh, is under costed. So there was definitely an ambitious game designer at, at FFG when they came up with the uh, when they came up with the Jump Master. No, I back when it was considered U boats when it was three contracted scouts with Dead Eye. Well, this is um, a, this is a U boat list. 
yeah. I would say. This is uh, yeah. But the, there's the, the the noticeable difference is the lack of dead eye. Um, it's not as relevant in this particular matchup with the deltas, but for the jump masters at PS3 to be able to just one forward slow roll, taking eyeballs each turn, and then to be able to spend their eyeball and get the free target lock from aggro. Yeah. It was uh, it was an action economy. Now, that, Steven, that's not where it goes. No. Come on. So, you, ever, you know what? This is a great opportunity. Yeah, he's, he's playing close to the board edge. Now, we do cut some of the, uh, the board off. Yeah. But uh, it should be... As someone who bumps a lot of using a lot of hard ones, yeah. it, it can be a tough template to, to figure out where you're going to go. Well, particularly on a big base ship, right? Yeah. Particularly on a big base ship. You're, uh, yeah. the, the trick with this is you basically go to the end of the maneuver when the bump happens and then move your back guides uh, backwards until the back guides overlap and then line the front ones up. So Howard is going to be running into number two, but the question is, is he going to hit both ships? Uh, interesting. Right. Uh, ideally for Halvunner would be to hit three and get a range one on number two. Okay, so uh, looks but like... We're going to have to see how they're going to... This is just a mess. You know, the third head that you're as seeing a, at the bottom, folks, is mess. our... Uh, is our loyal, uh, fearless leader and co-founder of the Prototype Toronto League and tonight's judge, uh, Aaron P. Um, uh, helping out the boys with this little cluster bump they've come up with. Um, just trying to figure out which of the two jump masters Hal Runner actually impacts first. Is like that... I said, ideally you'd want it to run into, uh, Alan will want it to run into three, Steven will want it to run into two. Correct. Right? Yeah, whichever one so. Hal Runner rolls into is the one that Hal Runner can runs into shoot. both, it's a wash. Yeah. So. In the end, the defenders are going to shoot at the undamaged number three. So I think. Uh... So we've got a one hard coming in from Omega Leader. Looks like for a bump as well. Um, interesting choice. More. I mean. I don't know what's going on here. This so is, this is, every, this is an every, odd way to fly TIE Well, every ship except Jumpmaster number one bumped in this in this round of movement. They're not uh, sure. Yeah, I'm not sure Alan knows how to fly ships other than Carno Jacks, but we'll see. This is uh, going to be an interesting round for sure. A, our uh, Alan Fung has definitely flown an Inquisitor once or twice. In once, or twice. once or twice. Once or twice. I heard he beat Dun Duncan Howard with some defenders, so he's, he's, he's pretty good with those. This is uh, Omega Leader on to number... Number one, I hope. Oh, we got another blank out from Jump Master. Uh, it's, that's a dead ship. That's uh, that's rough. That's rough. So there we go. Uh, we got one Jump Master down. Looks like the uh, the opening engagement is um, paying dividends for Allen in the long run here. So um, we got a range one from Hal Runner so on the it looks Jump like Master number three. Yeah, looks like Hal Runner's bumped into two and and can shoot three, which is in interesting. So we got one hit from Hal Runner and, and one of eight. One of eight. So. It's a wash. Yeah. So now Moss has to decide an important question. Not only who do I want to shoot at this turn, but who do I potentially want to shoot ordnance at the following turn? Now, is that how uh, R4 works? It has to be at the target you're shooting at? So you must spend, when you spend a focus token, you can, may acquire a target lock on the defender. Okay, he's spending a focus token here, two yeah. hits. Now remember that, folks, even if you rolled three natural hits, you could still, you could still spend a focus token yeah. to acquire ooh, the target ooh. lock for next turn. That's two so, damage. Two damage on it looks Howl like Runner. Runner. There so, we go. Allen's list has lost a little bit of the efficiency now because he's no That's, longer got those offensive free rerolls. He needed that. He needed that because if the if the Deltas had uh, another shot with uh, Hal Runner, that would have been it for number three. Well, you're talking about similar types of firepower. I mean, two Delta Squadron defenders are nothing to shake a stick at. But when you, uh, I mean, I they guess, don't have focus tokens this round, Tim. They don't have focus. They don't have reroll. They don't have target lock. Yeah. It's going to be. Uh, Gonna be pushing rope a little bit, so yeah. And on top of that, I mean, uh, the thing about defenders is usually they only let through one damage at a time when you shoot at them. Yeah. However, if you shoot at them with a uh, oh, three a, uh, three natural hits there from Steven. Oh wow, what we got. Oh, oh there you go. Z yeah, thanks, Alan. Yeah, Zero for that. Zero on B. Now I'm not sure why he wasn't shooting at Omega Leader because Omega Leader doesn't have anyone target locked right now, and that would have been a you know, if you could have gotten damage in, that's still range one. That's a great shot. It is a great shot. Not to mention you would want those uh, you would want those uh, ordnance on a mega leader for following turn there. Now he yeah. has not acquired a target lock. So that is two hits from Delta Squadron pilot B on. Oh, and he's, he's eating it. Looks like he's shooting he's at shooting at three. He's shooting at number three. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's I think I think A was shooting. Yeah. That was A. So this a is shot at B. three, and now this is B shooting at number two. Yeah. 
Same thing, just no mods, just an Alan Fung roll of three hits. And another Alan Fung roll of three hits. So, I mean, we're looking at uh, two damage. Oh, one damage on number two. He spends the focus. Just in case anybody was wondering, Alan's, Alan's uh, dice rolling does actually work in both ways. Uh, we've all seen it happen where he can roll a magnificent uh, four natural hits with no... Uh, mods of any kind, but we've also seen him roll five dice at range three with you know auto thrusters and roll five eyeballs. Absolutely, and, and they're using stream dice here, so they're not using their own dice. Uh, so there's no no hanky panky going on. And uh, Alan himself is a consummate gentleman. Wrote a, a massive treatise on the FFG forums on uh, on weighted dice that a bunch of us ended up accidentally well, buying a, from the UK. It was a, it was a it was a scientific study. Yeah, like he actually did proper uh, a week off between jobs yeah. and decided to roll dice five thousand times. So I feel like you know it's uh, he did it to a st statistically significant digit. And uh, well, between yourself, Devin, and uh, Sumi. Who was the the wonderful caster from the Toronto Regionals uh, semifinals and on, um, and all the other guys? We give Alan a fair hard time, but uh, there's the nickname he's got around from his buddies, which is the Denim well, Cool King of X Wing, and it's, he, it's for he, a reason. He takes it like a champ. He always takes it like a champ. Yeah, there you go. We, uh, I mean, we, we you, you couldn't you couldn't make fun of someone if they didn't take it. Well, to be it honest with you, while, like I think I think there's a few of us around here who could probably get casted by Justin Timberlake in Trolls too for how much we troll him. Ah. Uh, I have not seen that movie. Is I that... haven't seen Trolls One either. <laughs> just, Trolls make one? It, just make it a joke. <laughs> is, 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 did it do well enough for Justin Timberlake to come back in Trolls Two? It did well enough for him to sing the song from the Trolls song as the opening song at the Oscars. Oh, good God! I think someone paid him a lot of money to do I that. I would not doubt it. No. All right. Okay. I, although I'd be just going off on a little bit of a tangent on JT here for a moment. I gotta say, I got a lot of respect for the guy because he's done a little bit of everything. He's in acting. He's done singing. So now we're we're joking around a little bit, but. What do you think? The Deltas are uh, 4K-ing. And, well, uh, yeah, I mean, Delta A would definitely clear a 4K. They, I'm not entirely convinced that the 4K from B would clear. Yeah? I think that it would probably clip the back of, of Jump Master 2, whereas, you know, uh, Steven here, he can do a 3 forward, or he could even do a 5K with number 2. Yeah. No. Uh, oh. Uh, sorry, 4K with number yeah. 2. Yeah. Uh, after doing... Or a white uh, sloop. Come now. I think a white sloop from number two would probably. Hit oh, the rock. Alan bumps again. Alan bumps again. So Alan's very happy with the current position of his two defenders. Going to wait for an opportunity to uh, um, move uh, defender B. I think much to the same reason that he thought that what I did was that um, defender B probably wouldn't clear. So he's getting the free evade on a defender B uh, because of the ridiculously broken X7 title, which has been fixed. Thank after you. This game. Thank you. Thank you. You just got it in the right, in the, the right space, Moss. Why are you moving it? Okay. Proxy the ship. And let's let's just get her done. Yeah. When in doubt, proxy the ship, folks. Come on, boys. Yeah, there's um, a, a tremendous amount of flying casual that happens, and that's the prototype Toronto League mantra. But, you know, um, we don't we don't fight over millimeters when it's a league match. I mean, when you're at a premier event. And you've paid, you know, 30, 40 bucks to be there. And there's, you know, bragging rights and, and um, resellable swag on the line. Then, yeah, you know, you count the millimeters. Uh, you, you know, you, you call opponents out on missed opportunities and stuff like that. But, um, you know, the, the PTL is a lot about learning and a lot about um, approachability. So um, there's not too many of us that would ever, um, you know, jump on somebody for... for not trying to eyeball a, a K turn or something Ab like that. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So we've got, looks like we've got a forward advancement from the jump master. Doesn't look like a K turn there. Just sort of a reminder I mean, if, if one of the jump masters were to K turn and stress both of them, and then the second one were to do a green maneuver and take the eyeball, then both of them still get that Atani mind link action. Economy. I look, he's, he's doing that blasting three forward again get trying to get out of there looks like it looks like it so he's probably thinking to himself you know what i mean i've got um i've got a mega leader sandwiched between my two jump masters at the moment so i really don't want to let her out of my sights just yet because ultimately omega leader can only target lock one of them at a time so the other one would get a modded shot at omega leader well i mean uh, this poor this contracted scout two yeah, it looks like Contracted Scout 3 is not going to be able to clear this maneuver. That's not um, going to stop uh, Moss from trying. No, nope, uh, definitely not. So you've got to backtrack that all the way to the front. So now 
TIE Defender B will get no shots this turn because... Oh, 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 oh they oh, just smacked an Omega Leader there. Smacking Omega Leader. It's okay, Aaron, Aaron looks like he's there to eyeball a little bit. So, if it's running into Omega Leader... So we've got let's a, Yeah, let's railroad it, guys. Train track of that and find out which one of the two ships the Jump Master is in. No, that's, oh, what is he doing? Yeah, yeah there's Al. All right. Yeah, let's... So I don't think that... There we go. Yeah, I, I would say that even before... Uh, they've got the back off. Let's... Uh, Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, it hits the defender. That's that's where Steven wants to be. It's interesting to note as well, Devin, that the uh, the def the jump master number three, the one that's left still alive, as I said at the beginning, is actually the one that has not have uh, extra munitions. So Alan was actually able to kill one of the jump masters that had uh, a full uh, cargo bay of ordnance. Um, it looks like we've got another bump. Um, safest coming. place for a Mega Leader to be. It is definitely uh, a safe place. Uh, unfortunately, a Mega Leader. Uh, he was trying to sloop. Going for the sloop. Gonna have to take a stress token here. Which That's will... surprising. Oh, <laughs> wait a wow, guys. <laughs> That's great. I've had games like that. You know, you and your opponent spend five minutes expertly placing something, and then uh, as soon as you take the, the templates away, just. There it goes. Just knocking it across half the board. Devin, may I interest you in a pierogi? No, I'm good. I'm going to steal a piece of bacon, though. You can steal as many pieces there of bacon as you'd like. The uh, One of the reasons that Tuesday league nights uh, with the PTL are, uh, are so popular is out of the three or four different venues that we play at across the city, this is one of the few ones that face-to-face -face games uh, over on uh, Danforth and Woodbine that actually has a cafe on the inside of the, of the store. So they sell... An array of uh, coffee lattes this and is, yummy this snacks. Is... Now here we go. Here we got some action coming. Omega Leader's got no shots, so we're going straight into the uh, the scouts. But that's a wash. I mean, Alan's making this list look ten ply, and I mean, he's Stevens, uh, a great, uh, great player. Going in again. Oh, does he spend it? Yep. There we go. Two hits. Whether, is the defender going to take it? Uh, he's fine. Spending that evade. B's got no shot anyway. That's 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 frustrating. It's got to be frustrating. Yeah, the only one of Alan's ships that has a shot this turn is uh, is defender number A. Yeah. Looks like he's got a range three to the damaged one. Well, let's see what he shoots. Jumpmaster two has no shields thanks to our wonderful V Double TV live overlay. Yeah. Looks like he's shooting at three. I mean, that's that's the sub. Oh, yep. Yeah. We got the extra range bonus. Yeah. Throwing that extra dice. Focusing for four hits. Uh, now in fung roll, right? There you go. Three damage. That's two shields and a plink into the yeah. hole, looks like. Oof. Take that right in the feelings. Yeah, pow in the kisser. Yeah, number three. got to be feeling a little bit of frustration here. I know what you were saying about Moss. Moss is a great player. I've played against him a few times, and... I actually got destroyed by this triple jump list of his on the weekend. Oh, that's what I was saying. I think it has a lot to do with if you can range control it on the opening salvo and not give him those ordnance target locks. It's hard. It's hard. I've been re uh, recording and reviewing a lot of my games, and, you know, it, it hurts to go back and confirm when, you know, you make one maneuver. You go left instead of right. That happened in our game earlier today. Or you make one decision versus another decision, and that decision costs you the game right then and there. You put yourself behind, you know, opponent calls it, or it just wasn't the right thing to do. And that, with three forward right at the beginning of the game, just bumped by millimeters, and had you done a two forward and they all got focuses, might be a different game. Devin, did you say that you record and review your own X-Wing games? I do. I do, Tim. Now, how per chance would you ever accomplish such a feat? So I use my, uh, my phone, and I uh, record via time lapse. So I take a photo every... The camera takes a photo every five seconds and uh, ends up looking pretty neat. They end up being about seven or eight minutes, depending on the length. And, uh, yeah. Let's you uh, at least see the ebb and flow of your match from a, from a quick overlay. Absolutely. Now, this is interesting. Alan not bumping with the uh, defenders finally. So, three bank, 4K. Mm. 
and breaking his own chips. But uh, where do you think number two is going? I'm surprised Allen didn't use the one red and one uh, blue defender in an effort to confuse his opponents. Which one's the Delta? I don't know. Is, the de is this one Delta? Yeah. Well, Steven, I don't think, would, would fall for something that simple. I don't think so. Yeah. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed with the, the way Allen's been engaging this whole game. There's been a lot of range control, a lot of action denial. Um, I'm sure Allen looked at this list and said to himself, this is a list with a incredibly powerful action economy. If I can bump one of them that oh. cause the other ones to slow one, down. One forward from number two looking to bump uh, Omega Leader again. Makes sense. The two bank would definitely cause uh, a bump here, I reckon. And any no actions? Yeah, there we go. Talk about fly, fly casual. Folks for everybody. Love it. Okay, we got a three bank coming from Jumpmaster number three. We're going to have to proxy out Omega Leader to complete that maneuver. Alan using those lovely orange templates that he picked up from the Ottawa Regionals that just happened recently. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of you who are watching who don't know, or maybe in Toronto, um, not only is Devin a part of, uh, but he's also uh, friends with many of the Bytown Smugglers League uh, players out in the Ottawa Gatineau uh, Orleans area. Yeah. yeah. And I got to say, you know, about, I think there was about 15 of the PTL uh, guys that went. Yep. over to the Ottawa Regionals that happened recently. And boy, howdy, were they just the nicest hosts. Um, Ottawa's a great city. Now, uh, here's Alan clearing that stress and uh, just slamming into number two. Looks like uh, one of the jump masters might get another uh, modded range one shot on Omega Lear here, Devin. Yeah, number three. Uh, certainly, if he survives this round, looks like he's got two Delta shots on him. Mm. But if he survives, he'll be able to... Maybe sloop for a shot on a Megaliter with some Torps. But he's the one that's only got one Plasma, so... You know, fingers crossed. Definitely going to be an important turn. If uh, if Moss can kill a Megaliter here, he might actually have a chance. No. He's got a target lock on yeah, a Megaliter that he's going to spend, because a Megaliter doesn't have him locked. And he's going to spend both his tokens in an effort to get a hit-hit crit on a Megaliter. Allen rolls... And Moss, are you going to remember yep. your aggro mech? Is Moss going to remember his aggro mech? That's a very good point, because he spent the target lock first, and then he spent the focus token, which means he now actually can reacquire that target lock. He he did not. Unfortunately, that's a missed opportunity, Devin. Yeah. Now we got a, a range three downtown shot at uh, Defender. Laps it off. Laps it off. No. That's what defenders do. I am taking a bit of joy in watching jump masters and defenders smash against each other. I feel like that's uh, in some in some in some ways they deserve each other. Well, on the one hand, as a as a as a player who flies a lot of VCXs, I was happy to see the jump master nerf go. But three I did... hits. That, that focus was. Uh... Oh, and we're gonna take one damage take on one. number three. Yeah. What are they arguing about? I think Moss was just singing for a second about aggro met, but you can only spend your uh, yeah. focus token oh, on Oh, is Alan, Alan going to let him take the aggro mech? I don't think so. Ooh. I doubt that Aaron would let that uh, that clarification go. <sighs> oh, that's tough for Steven. So we got a hit crit from one of the deltas. Guessing that's delta number A. Yep, range two on number two. Range two on number three. Oh, oh there you go. That's a great roll. There you go. You know, he's still in this game. Yeah. Um, we got... Now, Devin, correct me if I'm wrong. Is that an eyeball token on top of Omega Leader's shield token? No, his shield token is off to the side by Juke. Okay, so Omega Leader has no shields. Then. Okay. My mistake. We should uh, get Victor to clarify that. Well, it was confusing. Uh, I know that when I when I played against Allen at the Toronto Regionals, um, his Omega Leader had a shield upgrade, so Omega Leader had two shield tokens. Yeah. So it was that moment when you think to yourself, oh, good, the next hit I'm going to get is going to go to Hull. But uh, unfortunately, in that case, it did not. So Omega Leader did lose his shield. So when he moved it from Omega Leader to the Juke, it, I guess it's far enough off the card. Did you say his shields or her shields? We're going to get into this philosophical argument again Look, about whether or not Omega Leader is a woman or not. The ship is a she, but I'm not sure 
if uh, a Tie Fighter is a ship. It might be a boat. Like I, I don't. I would make that. I know. I, I fully validate or validate. Sorry, that, that. the difference between a boat and a ship. Yeah, you can put a boat on a ship. Correct. Uh, that's that's a hundred percent. You can put a Tie Fighter in something else. Correct. It makes it a boat. Correct. A space boat. But I think the actual pilot, Omega Leader herself is a woman. Is a girl? According to some of the lore that I've read, I mean, we all know that Omega Leader is actually the TIE FO pilot that chases Finn Ooh. and Rey in Episode 7. Oh, yeah? Uh, on on Jakku. Jakku. So, but all of those TIE fighters die. Correct. Tim. Correct. Are you telling me that one of our favorite TIE fighters is just, it's, they're just dead? Well, favorite is such a relative term, Devin. I mean, personally, I hate Omega Leader. Oh. Uh, it well, is the most annoying ship that I have ever... Because the problem is, if it comes down to the end of the game, well, we and it's can. you versus Omega Leader, yeah. it is the most annoying end game. Well, that's because you're not flying 51 plus point ships. Clearly, you should fly ships of value 52 and greater. Well, and then you wouldn't care. Like double ghosts. I've never flown that against an Omega Leader, ever. Trying to nail her with that that unmodded uh, auto blaster turret. It's like trying to nail Jello to the wall. What's she doing at range one of you? That's some bad flying there. All right, this is uh, this is the moment where he wishes he remembered Agromex. Yeah, this is exactly where Agromex would have made the very big difference, unfortunately, for because uh, you would have seen a plasma torpedo here on the Defender A and a plasma torpedo on the Omega Leader. Now I know that Moss has only been cracking this list out recently uh, to try and see what kind oh, of. Oh, there he's throwing is. down a target lock. See, that's a great thing about a tiny mind So, is so if, three's if, gonna if three's one gonna of them, focus. If one of them focuses, the other one focuses. So I can just take yeah. a. I'll just take a target lock and move on with my life. Now he's hoping to block Omega Leader here, which would be gold if he could. I don't even think a one turn. Oh no, no, probably a one turn to Omega a one Leader. One turn, a one turn, and clear that. But where are you going next turn? You got a barrel roll. That's not what a tokenless Omega Leader really wants to be doing. Uh, I so, think the Omega Leader two bank to her left probably fits in between the jump. Let's masters. let's let's see. I think you went. Oh yeah, I was gonna say I think you went far. It looks like you might have gone hard. Yeah. Getting out of dodge. Opting to disengage here with Omega Leader gives her an option for an action at least. If he's able to power down one of these, right, he wins. Now Alan's Alan's pretty it's pretty fairly on his side right now. But if uh, Moss is able to burn down both of the defenders, right, then uh, if all he has to do is kill one of them, because he's got half points on both. All right, Moss is uh, shooting something. There we go, plasma torpedo on the Omega Leader. Oh yeah. Let's uh, let's see how that goes. Sorry, apparently I left my stuff all over one of the tables. Ah, uh, you're just a messy jerk. I am a messy jerk. Sorry. So we got uh, one crit. Did did he did he forget guidance chips? I don't think he can mod anything, Devin, because Omega Leader has him locked. Oh my God, yeah, that's fair. Right. All oh, right, that's how that works. One crit, which... Looks like the crit goes through. Uh, direct hit. So, we're just going to try and find out what the crit is for you, folks. Um, unfortunately, VWTV Live, being the Johnny on the spot um, recording helpers that they are, set up our stream tonight in very quick form, and um, we didn't oh, have as much time tough. as we like to adjust the light levels, but so far it's yeah, working it, out. Yeah, but it was a direct hit. So, yeah, Omega yeah. Leader lives for another day, but he's got one hull. She's got one hull. She's got one hull, and then the the kill blow from number three just unfortunately her, her, couldn't her do it. Her rowboat's full of leaks, but she's still alive. But uh, I think number three is not long for this world. I, got, can't, uh, I can't say I disagree with you. Three hull left and two defender shots? That's... Uh, <clears throat> That's a hard, hard road. So we got two hits, one evade. That's one. That's on number three. All right. Yeah. A, unfortunately, Moss has got his shots. Matt Moss has got his back against the wall here. I mean, he's not spending the eyeballs offensively to get target locks for the following turn because he's trying Whoa. to keep them for defensive mods. Now the A doesn't have a, a focus, so it's only two hits. There he takes another one. I mean, he lives. That's 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 a blow. Looks like it's a face up damage. Oh, it's crit. That major looks like major explosion, and that's a that's fine. Negative explosion. That could have gone much worse for him. 
Well, that's so. exactly how Allen actually got knocked out of Toronto Regionals. It was, now, uh, tell, tell me about that, because I think you had something to do with that. I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, okay. I, I was not there. <laughs> it, it, it was not my Fenral that rolled... Um, I rolled a five. He rolled two of eights. You rolled five hits. I rolled five hits. Right. One of them was a crit. Okay. And he rolled uh, just enough of eights for me to take his shield. Yeah. Because he had a shield upgrade on Carno Jacks. Dirt. Because apparently people do that. Yeah, I mean, you got to keep him alive. Um, and then the, the first hit into hull was a crit. Yeah. Face up, major explosion. This top four or top eight? This was top four. Yeah. Um... The crit was the major explosion. He rolled the hit, and it was a direct hit, and his car went poof. Yeah, that's that's. Which, which of course then Fenrau freed does. up my other guys to spend focus tokens that turn and keep my guys alive. Now I, I mentioned uh, this to to Alan both before and after Toronto Regionals, but it's difficult to to slicer a, a T seventy list to death, isn't it? You T T seventy yeah, list. You, you, you used Guri to to slice. A bunch of ships to death that tournament, didn't you? Well, that's kind of my my, my mo is Timbo Slice because yeah. I, I love Black Market Slicer tools. I think it's one of the um, it's one of the best upgrades in the game. Uh, VWTV Live actually casted myself in round three yeah. of uh, Toronto Regionals, playing a, another great um, Ottawa region. Sorry, Oshawa regional uh, player named Gus, and he had um, Gus comes in, plays here sometimes. Yeah, he does. He's a great guy. He had a push the limit Arvel. And um, a chopper, Arvel. Yeah, Arvel. Arvel cried. What a great A wing. Love so Arvel does does what again? Arvel is a great little A wing because uh, you're familiar with the the Zeb crew upgrade on the Ghost, where if you bump into the Ghost if it's in arc, both of you can shoot each other. Now, I know Arvel is a hero. He killed a super star destroyer by ramming. He, he it. crashed it right into it. So that yeah. that's in the theme with his pilot ability, which is that if you bump into somebody as Arvel, yeah, you can still shoot them. So putting a, an EPT like Intimidation on Arvel and then a Proton Rocket upgrade, he's a, a little A-wing battering ram. He runs oh, into you, reduces your agility, and he can still shoot you. Sounds like Proton I, say, I need to give that a try. That well, he's, sounds not yeah, bad. he's a fun little ship. He's PS6, so he'd be great for blocking something like a Ventress and then Proton Rocketing a Ventress with reduced agility. Now, where do you think everyone's going? We need to get some of these uh, focuses cleared off the board, but uh, Omega Leader's just going to work her way back around and... The Delta yeah. is just going to keep doing work. I don't think there's a scratch on him. See, interestingly enough, Steven has his two jump masters in a perfect opportunity to literally just switch positions. Yeah. Right? Because if, if he moves three first, then even the Deltas have moved before him. He's yeah. created a void here where his other jump master might actually be able to move into position to continue the barrage on Omega Leader. Unfortunately, number two has shot a, a, a plasma torpedo, so he literally only has two plasma torpedoes left. One of them is on a one health contract of scout, so he's not flush with options at this point. But I really three, think three is not long for the world. I'm, I'm, you know, he's got to be thanking his stars that it survived last round. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you think, Devin? Do you do you break off from the chase on the mig leader and go after one of the deltas here, or do you continue to stay on target? There's no way to win. If you don't kill a mega leader, is that a bump? I think this is one of those situations where we're gonna fly casual and call it a bump. Alan's just double checking. No, he's gonna he's gonna proxy the jump and he's gonna see if it makes it. Be pretty huge if it does make it here. I think it. I think it might. If it makes it, then he didn't think it was gonna make it, but I. I it's. I think it's could, close. I think he could very well. Um, Traffic jam, both those jump masters. If this, if this 4K makes it, well, but it doesn't. They're just gonna say it doesn't. That, that, that X7 title. Well, it's like it's almost as broken as Slicer Tools. It's just what we were saying earlier. But I, I love Slicer Tools because, as an action, I can literally just. If I anticipate that I'm going to bump you and I move before you, I can still do a damage that turn. Yep. Um, you can uh, psych people into uh, doing green maneuvers when they didn't have to because you were taking away their stress token. I'm very excited to see where uh, where Steven is going. I really think that Steven's got more options than he thinks. So I think that he probably thought that that jump, that, that 4K might have cleared. So he's decided to move his three, uh, Jump Master number three first, which is not a great situation now, unfortunately, because now he will receive 
two shots on Jumpmaster number three. Now he does get to shoot deltas. before they do. This is true. So he might be able to push. Let's be honest here. They're double token defenders. One damage in maybe three dice on three dice. That's not. Does Defender A have an eyeball as well? Uh, no, it, no, it's just got the evade. Just got that free evade from being. But maybe, defender. maybe he wants to strip, uh, strip the the eyeball from B. Give it a shot. But that's two dice versus three. That's uh, not a. Uh, not good odds. No, good and odds. the other thing that's probably very frustrating for Moss is you'll notice that uh, he's bumped both of his ships, so they're just going to stay still. And no focuses again. So all three of Moss's um, jump masters are equipped with a one-point intelligence agent crew member, which he has not used once this game. Moss, I, oh no! I think it's also well. I think he's probably realized that using it at this point is not. That I wonder crucial. where those defenders are going. Well, that's what I mean. The defenders that move before me, it's not really going to matter if I know where they're going because they get. And as far as Omega Leader and Howl Runner, I think it was pretty obvious that where they were going to go. And, and that. So it looks like Moss is going to try and shoot at Defender A. Yeah, he's got less tokens. It's range two. It's a bloody shame he didn't get an eyeball this turn. Uh, we yeah. got one hit coming through uh, from uh, Jump Master number. Uh, 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 he's got to reroll that. Got to roll that. It's cocked up. Uh, look at that. Yeah, that's no, just. I mean, he had an evade anyway. It didn't matter. No, I was not getting any damage that turn. That's rough. Is Defender, or sorry, is Jumpmaster number three shot? Uh, it has not. That was Jumpmaster number two shooting at A. So now he's got Jumpmaster number three shooting at B. He's trying to strip that token. All right, he's got two dice. Oh, he's shooting at a Mega Leader. One hit. Mega Leader rolling four greens with a evade, evade. token. Rolls out one evade. <coughs> That's. Yeah, thanks, guys. That's. Uh, I, I, I get. What he's trying to do is Hail Mary pass, trying to kill a Mega Leader, but... Yeah. So we got a range one from uh, Delta A, yeah. shooting at the jump. That's, uh, a, dead, like that's a dead ship. Three. Yeah. It looks like the three damage go through. Sorry, two Alan, damage go through. Alan literally taking it off the board. There we go. That's, uh, it doesn't matter what that crit is. I think they probably dealt one card too many, but it's not going to matter too much at this point, folks. Oh, he, he overkilled it quite a bit. So we're looking at three damage. Nope, two damage? He moved that way too quickly. Yeah, two damage onto the other jump. So it's down to three hull, and I think we're getting a, Yeah, we're getting a concession from Moss there, which is another way to fly casual with your opponents, folks. If you've ever played chess uh, before with anybody, sometimes you... You shake your opponent's hand, you tip your king, and you go get a you go get a cup of coffee. You know, it's yeah. uh, it's just. What